Uh, this is Francine Chin for Cutting Edge News Service. Our special guest is Shireen Anderson, a Jamaican actress noted for her role in Dancehall Queen and so many other productions. Shireen's infectious and passionate live performances helped place her on sold-out arena tours and renowned festivals worldwide as both an opening and supporting act for Michael Franti and Spearhead with international rock star John Mayer and multi-platinum selling rock band Counting Crows, just to name a few. She has also toured with Sly and Robbie and is endorsed by legendary duo Grammy Award winning drummer Sly Dunbar as The Real Deal. A truly strong vocalist on hardcore rhythms with the ability and potential to surpass reggae audiences to reach the masses. Good day, Shireen, and welcome to Cutting Edge Arts and Entertainment News Services. How are Thank you? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Okay. You're a busy woman, Shireen, who wears many hats. Actress, writer, singer, queen of dance or soul. There are multiple international engagements and appearances, video shoots, studio work, you name it. You have a new album in the works, collaborations, and you're currently doing it, doing almost everything. Looking from the outside, one easily gets the impression that each minute of your time is accounted for, planned for, and your every waking minute is filled with work. But I'm finding out that this isn't exactly so. We're discovering, Shireen, that despite your very heavy schedule, you're finding some time to give back through your charitable involvement with the Reach One Child Foundation. What exactly is the Reach One Child Foundation? Well, first of all, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I really believe in living my passion. And for me, I'm not just a recording artist or an actress or a musician or a singer. I think like most people, I wear many hats because I'm passionate about many things. And Reach One Child is one of the things I am most passionate about. Back in 2004, while I was a student at Middlebury College, I was searching for a way to help two institutions, my alma mater, Excelsior Primary, mm -hmm. as well as the St. Anne's Infirmary, you know, who had at the time they'd been affected by Hurricane Ivan. So that's really where Reach One Child was born, you know, in, in my college dorm room. The idea was really simple. I wanted to help people. You know, just, just under the banner where each one teaches one to reach one. So I got on the phone and I called a few of my friends and professors, as well as some professional singers, dancers, and actors, and kind of asked them to support a charity con concert that I was organizing on college campus. And the intention was to send all the proceeds directly to the, the um, St. Anne's Infirmary and Excelsior Primary. So the support from Middlebury College staff and students, and, and just all of the student-run organization, as well as the wider Middlebury co College community, was really, really amazing. I, I, I can't tell you, just in such a short space of time, people came out of nowhere to help. So, you know, Reach One Child has really been growing tremendously since then. With the support from my manager and business partner, Patrick Lindsay, we've been able to help children in some inner-city communities with school supplies for over the last seven years. And this is where we're really focused. You know, because we truly believe that education is just so important and is the best hope for a good future for young people, and especially in Jamaica, mm -hmm. you know. In addition to that, we want to push the methods by which children are being educated, as I think they need to be educated for their future and not necessarily, our, you know, their past. You know, we're in, we're in a different world now where, you know, just access to the Internet and technology and, and just how we communicate and, and, and how we drive things forward. It, it's drastically different from even when I was seven or when, when I was eight. So, you know, and we're, so we're about to embark on what I believe is our biggest venture to date. We're about to go on the Rock Jamaica School Tour. So, so far we've sponsored communities and sports teams and supported events organized by the Jamaica Cancer Society, such as Relief for Life, among others, but really the focus right now is the Rock Jamaica School Tour. As you notice, I am not uh, going after your, your celebrity and your career, because this involvement in charity truly impressed me, Shireen. I had no idea that you were doing this. And so I must ask you, what compelled you to organize... Um, reach re the ROC organization. Is this a direct response to some of the needs and the maladies that you've seen in especially our Jamaican society 
and which seem to be having an impact, negative impact in a lot of instances on our youngsters? Well, I think the aim has always been really simple, and mm -hmm. that's just to give back, period, to, to give back where mm -hmm. a lot has been given, a lot is expected. So to use what I have to really help someone else. And I've been on several school tours organized by several different organizations. And I've always really enjoyed the interaction with the students. So, you know, I do learn a lot from them, and I try to really impart what I also know. But I, I do feel like I can be of more service to the students through conversation. We, and when I say we, I'm talking about myself and the Reach One Child team, we don't want our aim to get lost by merely visiting a school to sing the hottest song that I have on the radio. You know, the aim for the Rock Jamaica tour is to reach the students through mentorship and motivational talks. And we're talking about multiple visits to, like, a select school with professionals who really extend beyond the entertainment industry. So we have journalists, we have lawyers, we have doctors, we have athletes, and, and just so much more. The focus will first be on fifth and sixth grades from elementary and primary schools in the East Kingston area. And, and the reason we chose East Kingston was because this is where I grew up. I'm from Rockfort and Nannyville and Winwood Road. Mm -hmm. But this is like my stomping ground. This is where I'm from, and this is where I thought I, I could first be of, of most use. So, you know, the team is really excited about this, and we look forward to interacting and working with the students. Okay. Now, I know that you have a very hectic schedule. Mm -hmm. And with such a busy schedule, how do you manage to be as involved as you are in a movement that has the potential to be so overly demanding? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the, 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 the two words is team work. work right. Teamwork. Mm -hmm. There is no I in team. And, you know, it, it's teamwork and, and really planning. I really do not do this alone. I'm really very blessed to have a small but very smart and passionate group of people around me. And they really get things done and they get things done well. We all kind of set the bar for the kind of work we want to remember. We want to be remembered for, sorry. And we work hard every day to achieve this, I think. So I, I do have to recognize my manager, Patrick Lindsay, and the Zealink Entertainment Management Team, as well as our Dance All Soul production team, and, of course, the Reach One Child team members and volunteers, and just Dance All Soldiers, because, you know, a lot of times my, my supporters, my fans, come on board to help with with different projects, like like projects for each one child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and it seems that you're you're doing this as uh, you're approaching this from a from a militant standpoint. You know, you're getting in there and you're you're doing action, not destructive ones, but but positive <laughs> ones. You know, and and you call your fans dance soldiers. S o u l d i e r s. Right, they're and dance hall soldiers. Dance hall soldiers. Yes. Okay. Um, a few years ago, Issy Shireen, when I requested an interview with you on radio, you do not know this, but right. I was <laughs> thoroughly impressed by your willingness to participate at such short notice. Now I see oh. where you're literally giving away your latest work on the internet. What's the name of the album again? It's called JA 9.25, and it's a mixtape. Yeah, so and it's, it's a mixtape, yeah. And even though I said I wasn't going to talk about your, your work in entertainment and your celebrity, I had to have people know she's giving away her work on the internet. So <laughs> well, I am sharing, the way I look at it, I think more like along the lines, I am really sharing it You're with sharing my fans. it. Yeah. Oh, you have all the right words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, knowing all this... um. Knowing all this and my interaction, my very brief interaction with you and your kindness, I'm not surprised that your generosity and your efforts to positively influence and encourage, especially children. Mm -hmm. You have, however, taken it a step further, I, I read, and you're lending your time to the fight against cancer. How did your team, or how did you team up with your play and the Jamaica Cancer Society? And what will be your role with them? Oh, wow. Um, first of all, let me say thanks. Mm -hmm. And second, okay. I think it starts, it starts way back. You know, I, I truly think my calling is communicating with people. And when I say people, I mean everyday people from all walks of life. But I think I've had really great examples all my life. I mean, especially my, 